The Council of Nicaea, sometimes also spelled Nicaea, both are cool, is usually regarded as the first ecumenical council of the church. Historians can punch on about whether Jerusalem counts in their own time. It happened in 325 AD, and if you haven't done so yet, watch the History of the Church video in this series to get a good idea as to whether, where the Council of Nicaea fits. Prior to 313, the church was dealing with official persecution from the Roman Empire, and as such, it found it pretty tough to communicate freely. Depicted by the little blue patches on this map, the local churches were small and isolated. Most of these little blue patches were minorities living in hostile pagan territory. Each community was run by a local bishop with significant power to interpret the faith. These little churches were tough, hardcore Christians who seemingly had to battle with an awful lot of lions. In 313, after the Edict of Milan, which legalized Christianity, the church spread rapidly and these isolated communities could communicate again. Hooray! And boo! Too many years alone meant that some communities, like the one in Alexandria, had developed the strange idea that Jesus was the best creature God had ever created, but he wasn't God. This heretical belief became known as Arianism, after Arius, the priest who most publicly encouraged it. The Western Church pretty much ignored this teaching, but the Eastern half of the Church was arguing so much that Constantine, who put his whole reputation behind the Christian Church with that Edict of Milan thing, declared enough was enough. He summoned the bishops to Nicaea for a council. 318 bishops turned up. Many were still bearing scars from the persecution that had ended only 12 years prior. They argued a lot and eventually Constantine suggested a reformulation of the belief to clarify it. He also suggested that voting against it would be unwise. 316 bishops agreed and uh, two disagreed. This reformulation was most of what we now call the Nicene Creed. Jesus is light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. The two bishops who voted against it were excommunicated. Unlucky. Now, Constantine's reformulation was right. It agrees with scripture and it accurately describes Christ's divine nature. This statement remains the basis of Christian orthodoxy today. Jesus is God. However, secretly, many of the bishops just voted for it because Emperor Constantine told them to. This was a political act aimed at seeking unity for the sake of the Roman Empire. The Pope wasn't even there. So, when these bishops returned to their home diocese, many continued teaching the Arian heresies they were teaching before the council. Arianism, rather than being squashed, spread. Indeed, even Constantine himself flipped sides at least once. So while the council had re-evaluated the belief and successfully reformulated it through codification, the church had failed to successfully apply that reaffirmed teaching to new circumstances. Because of this, within 60 years, another council had to be called to reaffirm the belief again. So in revision, this is the kind of slide where you're going to press pause and take a bunch of notes. I'll see you in the next video on the Council of Constantinople.